What is happening everybody? Today I want to talk about warming up for squats and if you are new to my channel or if you missed them before, this is kind of the continuation of the squat series I've been doing. There's two previous videos that I highly recommend if you're looking for help with your squat. The first one is called how to squat low or basically if you can't squat low, how you can start squatting lower and it goes over some of the different kind of mobility exercises you can do to kind of get yourself to a point where you can start hitting depth properly. So check that one out if you have struggles with that. The second one is how to squat properly. It's going over squat technique and how to efficiently move through the squat movement to perform as efficiently as possible. Now it's not going to be the exact same for everybody, but there's a lot of principles you can put in place to be a more effective squatter for the body that you have. So if you missed that video and you're looking to get better at the squat, I highly, highly, highly recommend that one. It will definitely help. Now, as far as warming up for squats, I just want to start this off by saying that there's no 100% fact out there. There's nothing that's the absolute truth. There's nothing that is universal. There's several ways to do this. The way that I'm going to approach this is going to be my opinion based on my experience, some literature, and, and just being around the game for a long time and getting my opinion based on these things that I have. Okay, the biggest thing that's going to come into play for you personally on how you should warm up for squats is really going to come down to how flexible you are and how easily you can get into proper position to do the squat. If you have a really hard time getting to depth and you're super tight, you're going to have to warm up differently than people who are extremely flexible and have no problem getting out of depth and have, have, have taken the necessary steps to get their body to get into the proper range of motion from the beginning. There are a lot of different ways to warm up for squats and a lot of the different things that you usually hear, you've got static stretching, you've got dynamic stretching, you've got foam rolling or self myofascial release and these are all, these all have their place in the, in the squat but how you do it and when you do it is going to vary and it's going to be different for everybody in my opinion. Okay, let's talk about the three. First, we got static stretching. In my opinion, static stretching has gotten a really bad rap lately and it's not all bad. Even pre-workout, a lot of people think, okay, you shouldn't do it pre, you should do it post. A lot of the research is, is starting to suggest that this is the best way to do it. But again, it really depends on you and each individual. Now, a lot of data will suggest that you won't be as powerful through the movement if you do static stretching first. And while that may be true, my argument is if you are someone who can't do a full range of motion on the movement anyways, who cares how strong you are and how powerful you are through the movement if you can't hit depth? It's more important to try to get to the point where you can actually hit proper range of motion and hit depth and do the movement the way it's supposed to be done. You'll get more out of it anyway. So for someone like that, I suggest static stretching. If you have super tight hips and you can't get to depth because of that, stretch your hips before the movement and you'll have a little bit better range of motion. If you have extremely tight hamstrings, same thing, stretch your hamstrings, it'll help you get a better range of motion. But that doesn't mean that you should only static stretch prior to squatting. This should be a temporary thing. You should only do this until you start to get to a point where you have better flexibility and better mobility to be able to hit depth all the time. So don't just do it prior to your workout. If you have super tight hips, stretch your hips every single day and continue to do so until you have that, that range of motion that you need so you don't need to show up to the gym and static stretch anymore because you already have the flexibility to get in the range of motion that you need to do. Now we got dynamic stretching. If you don't know what dynamic stretching is, it's basically utilizing continuous movement to help blood flow to the muscles and just kind of prepare your body for exercise. It'll help bring your heart rate up a little bit and it just it's a little bit better than static stretching for most people. Personally, I like dynamic stretching, but I don't do a ton of it. I just like to do some leg swings, maybe front and back, side to side, do some walking lunges, maybe some body weight squats and stuff like that just to kind of get your body moving, get the heart rate up a little bit, get your muscles a little bit loose prior to working out. It can be very helpful and I personally like it, but it's not the hard, steadfast rule to getting ready for squats either. Then we've got the controversial foam rolling. I don't know what it is, but there's something about it right now that it's just going out and there's just like this hard clash between people that are either saying, don't do a pre-workout, do a pre-workout, and there's like no in between, like it either must be done or you must stay away from it. And again, it's all individual. So the purpose of foam rolling is to loosen up your tightened muscles. It's to, you know, release the trigger points that might be in your muscles and kind of make everything a little bit looser, a little more relaxed. And again, it'll give you a better range of motion and it'll just make things a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more flexible through the movement. So now, once again, you almost go back to the exact same argument that you had with static stretching. Some people say, if you do it first, then you won't be quite so tonic and you won't be as explosive and it'd be as powerful through the movement, so it's bad. Then you got other people that say, well, you know what? You need to do it to be able to hit proper range of motion and it's just something that you really need to do. Again, 
individual. Do what works for you, and the only way you'll know this is to experiment around. Personally, I kind of relate it back to like I do with static stretching. If you have a limited range of motion, if you're super tight and super sore, foam rolling can help you get loose and get ready for squats and help you perform better because of this. But I also feel like, just like with static stretching, if you're foam rolling frequently enough, if you're doing it on a routine basis, you shouldn't be so tight and sore anyway, and you should be able to show up to the gym without the need for going through a 45 minute foam rolling session so you can go ahead and do your workout. You wanna to get to the gym and you wanna work hard and, and if you're just laying on the floor and doing a bunch of foam rolling and stretching for 45 minutes to an hour, you're gonna lose that mental edge that you have and you're not gonna be able to perform as well. At least I'm not. Maybe I mean, everyone's different. Like I said, nothing's universal, but personally, I wanna to get to the gym and I wanna get going and if I have to spend all this time warming up, it's much harder to do so. Now, whether you've done static stretching and or dynamic stretching and or foam rolling to get ready for your squats, you still need to get ready for the weight that you're going to do, especially for someone who is like me and is a power lifter and is going to be lifting heavier weights. You need to properly progress to get up to the working weight that you're going to be doing. And you can't just go from doing the bar to 135 to 400. Your body will not be ready for it. You need to properly warm up. So again, I like to take personally, like if I'm going to work up to 405 pounds, I'm probably going to do the bar for about 10 reps. I'm going to grab 135 for maybe eight reps. I'm gonna go up to 225 for about six reps maybe, and then I'm gonna go up by roughly 50 pound increments and just keep cutting the reps down just a little bit until I get really close. I'll probably even do a single at 385 right before I hit 405 just to make sure that my body is ready for this heavy weight. Because if you jump up too much, it's too much of a shock and it's just gonna make it more difficult. And a lot of times you'll notice the first set can actually be the most difficult because you haven't warmed up properly and your body is not ready for that heavy weight and it takes a couple sets to get into it. So that's why it's very important to properly warm up with the working weight, doing the movement that you are doing to get ready for it. So what does this all mean? Ideally, you're gonna do enough stretching and you're gonna do enough foam rolling and enough mobility work that you can just show up to the gym, maybe do some quick dynamic stretching, just kind of get your heart rate going any way you wanna do that, and then just kind of slowly start getting into your working weight. So the bottom line is, you need to work with what's best for you and it's not the same for everyone. I can't just go out and say, hey you, do it this certain way, it's the best way to do it. That does not exist, it's different for everyone and the only way you're gonna know is to go through the motions yourself, try various different things, see what works best for you and stick with it. Do not let somebody tell you that what you're doing is wrong because if it's working well for you, then just do it. it there's no universal truth just do what works best for you. All right guys, that's all I have for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave it a like. It helps out the channel a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I will definitely get back to you. Share this with anybody you think it might help and I will see you guys in the next video. In my opinion, my opinion, my opinion, my opinion. My opinion.